Det er lige ejtledom. Nej, little thing is 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 a funny little thing. The, I I posted funny that video of thing. me a little thing in the podcast last week, mm-hmm. and then there's some very funny comments on it. But uh, like, there's people like people going like, I love trying to say that Irish people are a bit more sophisticated now, and it's like <laughs> Irish people are like, no, no, we're not all just drinking Guinness and singing songs, and then it's like also Ireland, and it's me going, I diddly diddly do diddly yeah. diddly. Yeah. Diddly. It's like yeah, that is part of it as well. <laughs> It's re-raw Irish lager, but through the Noise of a donkey. Oh my god! I thought you did that like a Pinocchio bit. You know, no, you no, the donkey. no. It's, oh my it's god! Irish it's lager. a very scary bit of Pinocchio. It's a very scary bit. But I the, had to calm my nerves and have a nice cool drink the last time I watched it. You know, I had. I well, had. no, well, you know, that's not you don't, that's not what you drink. You drink, you know, within moderation. I drink responsibly. Responsibly. I just responsibly. had one can. Don't don't do it. Really my don't favorite do bit of uh, of Pinocchio is when Geppetto is after making Pinocchio mm. and then he goes to the fridge and he opens up the fridge and he cracks yeah. up on a nice can of Re-Raw. Yeah. Uh, Re-Raw Irish Lager, which supports this podcast and we were very grateful to them for doing that because it's nice to be supported by an independent Irish lager. Especially from County Wicklow, which is the coolest county at the moment, I feel. Kill wanton, mm. baby. Kill cool, man. And we love them and they love to support very good Irish comedy as they do with and this And they support podcast. this as well. Oh, very good. <laughs> 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 Haven't done that in a while. Anyway, look. At Re-Raw. Re-Raw Beer on Instagram. Light and fresh. Crisp. Re-Raw. <laughs> but like, you know, you have those kind of, you know, those rap singers that are like, you know, you know, Hennessy and weed and, you know, and they talk mm. about all the stuff that they like. And we just have our, you know, six million dogs, eight million hugs, ten million <laughs> barrels of porter. You know, that's kind of the same thing. We know? have Hennessy too. We do have Hennessy. Yes, yes. It's mank. I was into Hennessy a lot as a teanager. Really? Anyway, we would like to thank our sponsors, oh. Hennessy, um, uh, for their lovely drink. Yeah, Tony thinks it's mank. I think it's mank, actually. What do you have? Remy Martin? Something like that? Don't have any cognac. It's rank. Is it wine? Is it sweet? No. What is Hennessy? Brandy. I know the rappers like it. Brandy and ports. Do you ever have that? No. Mm. Do you know the oak, the burr? Yes. I had a moment for a while where they had like this club in the basement. Yeah. What was it called? Like Dirty Sluts or something? Dirty, something, something like, stupid yeah. fucking bitches and everything. You probably were in TY. Yeah. You probably in TY at the time. <laughs> but, um, you know, we had this the club down the, in the bottom and there was a bar there, but it was always rammed. So like we would... Radiator? Something like something that. Like right, that. Right, right in. Send us if you remember the name Some, of it. There's cool dudes out there cool or dude. people who wear cool dudes and yeah. now are as bald as me and have as many kids as Tony, but, you know. Yeah, they were too cool for me at the time, but now they're like, oh, hi, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, um, so there was an old man pub upstairs and w- we noticed at one point they had this old kind of like handwritten wooden sign above the bar, right? And they had, it said port, right? Uh, 50 cent or something, right? Hmm. And it was really old and we were just like, oh, look at that. So we went over and was like, uh, can I get a port, please? And they were like, oh, no, like that's just purely a kind of decorative thing. And Mick Huron, who was like, you know, trained to be a solicitor, he was like, Unf- I like it's it's displayed there. Unfortunately, you have to sell us at the price. No, and there was like a young on. person there. So it was like, all right. So it was like, yeah, well, I'll, I'll have four ports. <laughs> You'll have four ports. And we were fucking down in port, like big red teeth. And Did they gave you port for they 50 They gave cent? us the port for 50 cent. They gave it to us. And they get, and like we were like, oh, no, six ports, please. <laughs> I was trying to count to three euros. <laughs> and we were downstairs like dancing to like, you know, klaxons or whatever, like yeah. big red teeth. <laughs> What a time. I do love I a port. I don't though. say in what you say. <laughs> yeah. in a por- Another port, please, sir. Uh, another port, please. <laughs> These young people and their port. It's mad. This port epidemic. If you want to spoil me now, I'll tell you what I like. Okay. I like a bottle of port on the table. Some um, cure, a cured meat of some kind, a chorizo, whatever it might be, jamón. Mm. And then maybe a bit of manchego, something like that. Yeah. Some bread. Mm. And that will that would be your that, ideal that charcuterie is, situation. That is just like over casual, just drinks, you know, just chatting. Yes. Maybe on a terrace mm. in the summertime. That for me, delicious. That's wonderful. Very nice. Is that boring? I'm yes. panicking. No. Yes, it is. It is a bit boring, <laughs> but it, I'm just saying that's my love language. No, no, what's that? A charcuterie. Can can I can I just bring up that thing you were saying? People who were too cool back in the day and mm. are now hi, how's it going? Mm. 
the journey from club kid, cool dude, prick to like now how many, 15 years later and they're like posting videos going, working out and heading to them. I'm like, why don't you fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> These people who I were... I thought you had a, a deeper take than yeah. that. No, I no, for a no, much deeper take. no, actually fuck off. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't think you're obliged to forgive people who make you feel bad when you're young, right? I don't think you're ever obliged to forgive them. Same as your bullies in school. You never have to forgive those cunts. You can mm. if you want. You can. And that's mm. probably better for the, for you and the world. But these guys who went around thinking they were the dog bullocks. Do you remember though, there was a tier, like there was like the coolest people. There was probably like three per club that you'd regularly see at like, mm. you know, at Wax or at Cunt or whatever the night was. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I remember we went to one that was in the bottom of uh, Eamon Dorns and it was like a specifically new rave. Now, I remember new rave had a moment mm. of like seven months. That was kind of Claxons, Test Icicles. CSS. Testicles, CSS would have been mm. that kind of vibe. The Knife. The Knife would the have been. The Knife part of, of that? They were kind of electro or ele electronic, electro kind this of thing. This is, I feel like I'm, and I'm literally not even that much younger than you guys, but yes. I feel like I'm at an adult's dinner party and they're just talking about Dublin <laughs> in the 50s. Would you like your iPad, babe? <laughs> just, I we get like I'm iPad. literally sitting there twiddling my thumbs. And we like, went to go see. So we, we saw... The, the Claxons now. It was in the downstairs <laughs> of the Oak. Mm. The Oak, that's not there anymore. There was a great show band called The Claxons. <laughs> we all went out. We all were big UB40 fans. <laughs> <laughs> and we all went to that. We said, we'll go yeah. to that. With tickets booked. You have to send away for tickets in those days. <laughs> Anyway, you'd Avril queue Levine, up at Sound Cellar and you'd get your tickets. You just to queue up. Do you remember that? You'd have to queue up at Sound Cellar. There was no ticket queue master up. And you know, we'd bring in, it wasn't like to say, like, you go out and probably buy whatever, Boojums, whatever he's buying. <laughs> you'd, you'd bring in the sandwiches, you'd have them in the tin foil, and then you'd be all ready to go. And I tell you, you'd be queuing up. And then, well, there was one time, there was a bit of trouble the one night, but it won't. <laughs> and you'd be like, okay, well, when is the main act coming? I'm at the support act's playing now. Will I drop my yip? I'm going to drop my yip now. Going to have about 45 yeah. minutes, maybe 45, 50 minutes until they start coming up. And I want to be coming up and I know the encore <laughs> is going to be a really good banger. So and I want you'd to be, be coming rubbing up the each other's backs be trying, to each get, other's back. trying to get up on the yoke. You'd be rubbing each other's <laughs> backs and all the rest of it. And can I please have a sup of water? I am <laughs> gasping here. I need to get a light breeze and it was like heaven. I remember now your auntie, now she took a yoke and she, well, she wasn't, she wouldn't really been doing it as much. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she took the half the oak. We were down something in the Olympic Theatre. <laughs> she says the to Rapture, me, I believe she it was. Says to dance me, punk. Was that the Rapture? It was yeah, that's dance right, punk that's band right. called the Rapture at the time. <laughs> she said to me, "My stomach's gone." She said, "I said, doesn't." Well, she went in and tell her. I said, "The band on stage heard the shit." I tell you, oh, <laughs> well, she, she came out the glowing. place. She says, "I've never had a better shit." I'm sky, like, Dear, she so said, we need to take you home. She said, "I'm sky high. Yeah. I'm sky high." <laughs> And uh, that's Daddy died then afterwards. Uh, but, um, <laughs> um, but, uh, it was a lovely. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, New Rave was a thing for a while. Mm. But anyway, I thought mm. the story, to, not as funny as what you just did, but um, there was a guy. And, um, <laughs> I feel like we were funny together there. I know, but I'm just always in awe of you. I, I love you. I love you. Hey, I love you. I love you. I love you too. I like no, you. No, we, we painted What's our going own hats. What's like, You're all right. Yeah. You're too young. <laughs> you don't understand. You the name of this there. podcast is Young Hot Guys. I'm yeah. doing, I feel like I'm doing a lot of heavy lifting in the young part right now. And the hot. Hard, to be fair, <laughs> Michael Fry did say that. So I did laugh at that back in the early days with this podcast. When Michael Fry attacked us, where he was like, the, the only one young or hot is Killian. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. It is pretty funny. Anyway, I painted my own hat for the new rave night, and I walked by one of the cool guys, and he looked at me, and I was like, I painted my own hat. <laughs> and he just laughed in my face. It was like that dirty dancing, you know, like. You know, I painted I my own head. <laughs> I was holding a watermelon. Remember that, like in Dirty Dancing, that kind of thing? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can't believe I said that in front of the cool fringe guy. Were you trying to be random and cool or? Just trying to be random. Yeah. You know, I think I had a Game Boy around my neck. Oh. oh. Yeah. But I had a bird. So I was getting to ride sometimes. So <laughs> joke's on him. See, it's terrible being young as well. There's no way to win. It's terrible being that young because it's so stressful. Mm. Going out is fun or whatever, but, and your life is quite fun. But going out, it's also very stressful. Yes, very stressful. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, how much, how much pre-drinks would you be rocking back in the day? Like what would be your... your I your... feel like we used to do like eight cans. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. Like a lot, very drunk. Yeah. All of it. All of the drinking was done in the pre section Yeah, it was. And then You might be able to buy one or two. You'd go in... This is what it was like. You go in with maybe twenty euro, yeah, like five to get home, and then a few for the drinks in there and stuff. And then yeah. are you a Nightlink person? Yeah, Nightlink. Or if you split a taxi, usually a fiver will get you in. Yeah, like they, that's how much it was. I fell asleep on the on the Nightlink one time. Oh wow! And I woke up, and I'm from Dunleary, and I woke up. I was in Shankill. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god! And uh, it was so thing. far away from my home. And oh my the bus god. driver came up, and he was this African bus driver, and he came up to me, and he was so nice. The bus was stopped, and he kind of shook me awake, and he's like, "Hey," and I was like, "What?" He's like, "You're, you're." You know, the bus is over. You've got to get off. And I was like, the bus is over? The bus is over, whatever. He's like the that. And then uh, I was like... Um, my friend, my friend. <laughs> he, was, he was like, are you okay? Like, do you, are you where? And I just looked outside and I'm like, where are we? He's like, Shankill. And I was just like, perfect. Yeah, that's... I live in Shankill. And he was like... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, are you, are you sure? I was like, yeah, this is where I live. In fact, this is my house. Yeah. <laughs> Watch me knock on the door. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Oh, hi, ma'am. What's going on? Hi, ma'am. Uh, thanks, Mr. Bus Driver. I'm just going to bed. And then in Peter! Peter! There's someone in the house! In a shock Shh. twist, the woman was recently bereaved and she took him in. She was like, oh, come on in, son. Remind me of your name? Yes. Peter, he's finally come home. Yeah. <laughs> Our boy lost to war. He's back. Hello, Matthew. mother. Matthew is home. Those Matthew's Jerry's, here. Those Jerry's couldn't take me down. I told him I'm coming home to Mumsy. <laughs> Who do you think you're kidding, Mr. Hitler? <laughs> the bus driver's like, what the fuck? He's still standing there. The bus driver's watching it the whole time. Even though the bus was over. The bus was over. The bus was over. The yeah. bus is over. Go in peace mm-hmm. to love and serve. <laughs> no, the night link is good crack. Mad stuff happens on yeah. there. I left Ireland when I was 20... I think I was 22, 23. Got, uh, t- and went wrong. to New York and I was really fed up with the place. And, I, uh, and then I went to... Workman's and I had a night out and Hosier had just gotten big. Wow. And everyone was saying I looked like Hosier. If you had long hair and a bit of a beard, Hosier all the time. People are pretty stupid, aren't they? People were just coming up and saying, oh, you look like Hosier. I I mean, I guess maybe those are the things that I would have done. Oh, I suppose we all look the same. That's the joke I would have done for that. I didn't even have a joke. I was getting so frustrated by it and I was getting real annoyed. I actually left the pub early. It was the night before I was moving to America and I uh, I was like, oh, fuck this. And then I, I went, I got on the night link and like pretended to be asleep on the night link because I was a bit fed up. And then these three people, really drunk on the night, like, were sitting around me, and they started like going, "Here, look at that lad there. There's a lad asleep." And I was like, you "Better not fucking say it. He looks so much like Hosier." <laughs> I was just like, "I'm fucking getting out of this country. I'm going far away where no one knows who Hosier is. <laughs> New York City." Like, literally get off the plane there. Welcome to America. You look yeah, a yeah. lot like that Hosier guy. <laughs> are you Hosier? It's, it's Saturday night. Like... Our special guest, Hosier. <laughs> mm. I think you are handsomer than Hosier. Do you know, Not, just, not oh that's God, not a slight at so Hosier, but I think you are. But do you know who Hosier is a sex symbol for? In a weird twist, Hosier is a sex symbol for lesbians. Is he? Lesbians Ooh, fancy Hosier. They? I don't know why mm. th- Hillary, th- can this you happens. confirm this? this? <laughs> 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 Hillary's bisexual that doesn't count oh, sorry. That doesn't skewed count. results skewed results in fact she says yes own, to everything mind your own business yeah she'll take it that's what yeah. she's like no but I do think and I tell you I'm guaranteed that lesbians are going to write in they, they, they just kind of do fancy hosier hosier I just love his hosier is like an actual Irish music like archetype, like he's 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 like he's the guy who picks up the guitar and is actually good at the party. He's the guy who's actually yeah. busking. You're like this guy should go somewhere. He's the guy who like puts in the reps. Like there's such a that kind of person, and very few of them, very few if any, actually make it through. He's he's a, such a perfect like. If there's ten, I feel like if there's ten kind of Irish type of musicians, you know, he's he's one of them. You know, he's when, wonder, uh, 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 My friend wrote um, uh, a sort of parody, we- a Weatherspoons ad with um, Hosier in it. Where I mean, he just pitched it to me. Uh, it was Mark Byrne, who I do the film podcast with. Oh yeah, he uh, he was like, "It's Hosier. He's he's just done like his fiftieth show in a row. He, he's sitting backstage, you know, like maybe at the back alley where you have the back door, and he's like, some manager comes into him and goes." Great news, man. We got it. We extended the tour 50 more nights, you know, and Hosier's like, great. And the door closes and he's got flowers and the champagne, but he's sitting there and he's really mm. tired. And then he just like looks himself in the mirror and he goes, take me to Spoons. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's ding, ding, ding. Take, take me to Spoons. Um, Is that anything like church? Uh, it doesn't sound anything like <laughs> church. But, so I kind of sometimes say that to myself, even though I despise weather spoons, I sometimes go, Take me to spoons. Take me to spoons. He, I met Hosier once. He was really nice. Did you? Was he? Mm. Oh, he seems very nice. He was just like really nice. Yeah. He sent. He said he liked my stuff one time on uh, Instagram, and I wrote back, uh, "Take me to chuffed." <laughs> <laughs> got a little heart. Got a heart. Kind of, you know, kind of light. Kind of, got a little thumb. 
Take me to what? Take me to chuffed. I really love your stuff. Like I'm chuffed. Take me to chuffed. Oh, you said that to him. Yeah. Well, I can comment. Worked on a film with his brother, John. Okay, no Not comment. Good. No, no What's the point? Them? What's the point, Killian? Why are you bringing that up? <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> Wait, his brother? John. John, John hose your burn. Hose, they, yeah, he, he's a filmmaker. They all have hose your burn. Yeah, and he's got some good stories about is that his mother's the Grammys name? and stuff. What a way to sully the good burn name by adding in some other fancy French one. Ugh, who do they think they are? Ozier? Ozier. It should be Shane hose your burn. <laughs> Shane Daniel Hosier Burn. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to say your headline act, Shane Daniel Hosier Burn. <laughs> Shane, Daniel. Chuffed. Shane Daniel Hosier Burn Burn. If you married one of them, that's what would happen. Yeah. Combine all the names. Shane yes. Daniel Hosier Burn Burn. More double barrel. <laughs> more, more, more. Soon, <laughs> all double children barrel. shall have four names. It is decreed upon this. I don't like my children have double barrel names. And it's literally like they are they are just walking proof of how stubborn me and my wife are. Because we didn't want double bar names, but they have double bar names because we couldn't come to, because my wife's a feminist, you know, mm. which is great. <laughs> <laughs> but she did also call Indy, whose name is Indigo, she, you know, full name. She's like, oh, Indigo can't well. So it's slipping in. She started like dropping her name into it, you know, mm. but, you know, we were entertaining doing a Mac Cantwell kind of thing. Cause she's a Mac. That's and cool. Can't, no, I like the Mac Cantwell. Cantwell. Don O. Porter kind of vibe. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. like that one. I like that one. I don't like Don O. Porter because Chris, uh, what's his name? Oh, I, I, I just, no, I don't like it. I think it's cute. Oh, I think it works. I'm not into it. I do. I like people fucking around with it, though. My friend, they have a boy and a girl and they the girl has daddy's name and the girl, the boy has mommy's name. Oh, they interesting. Just, like, yeah, because fuck it. Airlines l- airlines hate these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> airlines hate this man. Click click here to find out why. <laughs> click I think it's so <laughs> cute that the mams just for years. There's something sweet about it. They're like, "This is what's up." We were talking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's my like this is my name now. It's like, no, it isn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. My name is Mrs. Byrne. No, it is not. Like that's not your name. Like, mm-hmm, yes, it is. I belong to my husband. What are you doing? It's so weird that he just did that. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Even though they were, even you know, in my, my mother's generation, they, they, there was feminism for them to enjoy and, and partake in, but they still were like, well, of course, I'll but, do that. But you know, in like at weddings, they say like the man's full name sometimes, like, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Shane Daniel Byrne. <laughs> like they so <laughs> say the full name. <laughs> I'm Shane Daniel Byrne as well. Kiss me, Shane Daniel Byrne. Mm. So wrong. Yeah, or the um, man, sorry. Raymond did something like that, some joke about signing his autograph. Oh, he specifically said to me not to mention him on the podcast today for ah, some reason. True. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, but he wrote down. <laughs> but I'll tell you. It was like, p- put your name on some form or some things, but like a, a non important form, like a hotel. And he wrote Raymond Daniel Byrne. <laughs> that was quite funny. Oh, that's very cute. Yeah, because yeah. Daniel is part of my first name, you see. Yes. Um, so it's stupid. Have you ever wanted to change your boring name? I, I did. My name is Shane Byrne. Yes. Daniel is my middle name, but I brought that in to the fold almost. As a joke at first. Mm. I did it in um, for the CAO. I wrote Shane Daniel for some reason. Oh, that's or cute. there was a line that looked like a dash. Anyway, that's, I started it in college and then everyone started calling me Shane Daniel. And I was like, no, it's just Shane. <laughs> it's a lot more mm. fun to announce on stage. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why. Shane yeah. Daniel. Burr. It yeah. leads into it, it like, does. it doesn't, you know, there's something good about it. Except my dad calls you Shane Daniel. Oh, this is for Shane Daniel. <laughs> Oh, I saw in the Irish Times how many pages of Shane Daniel, Shane Daniel, Shane Daniel. <laughs> he did he, say that. He told me the other day, he said, how many pages in the magazine of Shane Daniel all the time, every time I turn the page, more of it. He told me that. Um, we're t- there's a rugby player called Shane Byrne as well, mm-hmm. of course, but d- there's a rugby player downstairs, Donald Callahan. he's mm-hmm. here again. Yeah, yeah. He What's is. he doing here? We should get him in. I don't know, but you always notice there's like, there was donuts. You know, donuts. There was donuts. If, there's, if, there, if the car- red carpet is rolled out, as I said, the red carpet of Munster, that mm-hmm. means O'Callaghan's in the studios today. Do you know who I want to be here? Mary Robinson. I'd like that. Like somebody good. <laughs> like sometimes people come in and sometimes you see in the Bradford's studio. Bradford's been in here. Now no, advertising. Been in here. I don't want to meet Driver. The new Philip screwdriver for Chadwick's. We have Mary Robinson. <laughs> Chairperson <laughs> of the elder, leader of the elders, Mary Robinson. What's Famous her for her Richard secure from? and uh, wonderful... unquestioning strength, uh, opposing war and injustices around the world our new screwdriver similarly strong <laughs> and it won't uh, give in to any Phillips <laughs> unforgiving. Phillips Phillips head Phillips head Phillips I can't, head. don't know if I have Mary Robinson in me that's quite good Phillips 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 head Phillips, <gasps> Phillips. Phillips. would you ever hand me the screwdriver a hand head. me a Phillips head Phillips. hand me a Phillips head Phillip. <laughs> Phillip. <laughs> it's like a cross <laughs> uh, I've been um, 
Uh, no, hang on, there might be more in this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. it. We, ho, we, ho. We, we bled that one dry there, and then it was like actually a moment of just silence, which panicked us all because we were no. like, no, it was like, Philip, 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 Philip. It was like, it was, there was like, I'd say one tenth of a second of silence. Everyone was like, <laughs> no, 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 see, I now out. listen in. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I yeah, move yeah, on yeah. very quickly in my own <laughs> head. No, I've been. Uh, You've been messing around, I was looking down. I listened to some uh, hip hop on the way in. Oh, did you? Yeah. I just thought, I just, that song always comes into my head. So what would get drunk? So oh, what was more Something green. about that song, it's like so uncool, but then I listened to it, I'm like, ah, it's a great song. It's a great song. But it's just something so uncool about someone going like, so what? I get drunk. So what? I smoke so weed. What? I'm young, I'm wild, I'm free. It's just something really, and it's like Snoop Dogg is on hey, the song. Hey, ma'am, so what if I get drunk? So it's what just really weed. embarrassing. Later on, Bastardized by Pink, of course. Uh, did Pink do that? So what? I'm still a rock star. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that might have been first. <sighs> Was it? I think so. God, I just have very little time for Pink. God, yeah. forgive me. God, forgive me. I have very little time for Pink. People, well, she just needs to like just stay. Just like, hey, I know you're flying around there. Hey, just you know, chill out for a second. Like, you, know, the, you know the Paul Black TikTok. Just, oh, Paul Black. Done. Have you seen? Get that's done. a wonderful. Oh, no. Paul hey, Black has a yeah, very done. funny Scottish comedian, but he has a really good TikTok where he talk, he's just like, Pink. He's like, no hate to Pink fans. No hate, but get done. <laughs> get done. <laughs> get done. <laughs> I do think that it was one night in my soul. I think I find. <laughs> I just saw her one time she was injured and then she injured herself doing the stupid stuff flying around. And then the concert was cancelled in the middle and she was like, I won't do this unless it's 100% for you guys. And they were all like, yeah. I was like, she mm. ruined it. She, you're after paying $110 to mm. go to the thing and then you only get a few minutes of it because she hurt herself flying around a stupid thing and then you all have to go home. What a waste of time. Well, you know, she's. I think she's... Was it worth it? Probably not. Look... Anyway, um, you're listening to hip hop. You're a hip hop guy. No, that's not. I was. I just was listening. That's just head. something I was. But I, I'm trying to. I basically am selling a couch at the minute. <laughs> Is that the segue from the hip hop? Yeah. No, the hip hop just came out of my mouth. Okay. I'm sick. I was been sick all week. I, you can probably hear it in my voice. I hope you weren't. And uh, but you weren't sitting on that couch. You were sitting on a different couch. The one you're selling. Oh yeah, the one yeah, I was yeah. selling. I have not touched it uh, yeah. as a sick man. Yeah. And uh, basically, I'm too big for the couch. We, we rush bought a couch that I'm too big for. And um, oh my god. It's uh, something that we didn't consider when we were buying a couch is width. Mm. So like like the the length of a couch is something we were thinking about, but we didn't consider width. The d- how yes. much arse girth could fit on it. Okay. And uh, and so it didn't it doesn't have a satisfactory width for us. So I'm selling it. Um Where did you get it? We got it we saw, we bought it on Facebook Marketplace. Oh very good. It was very funny we You're bought so it and there was this uh like young lad. I bought it off his dad. <laughs> And then this young, me and Anna drove out to Bray to get it. And um, there was this young lad who was like still in a school uniform. And uh, I was like, we were picking it up and Anna was going to get the other thing. And the dad was just like, no, no, he can get it. And uh, and this like young lad and me had to carry it. And he was like in his uniform, like carrying it. He was oh, like weird. fucking 14, 15. And I was like, Anna can take it. He's like, no, no, he will. Like, is it like, don't make a woman yeah, carry a yeah, couch yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, like old fashioned. And this guy was carrying, we were parked like miles down the road. It was oh like, my God. He was carrying it for ages. He was like, is, uh, is it just around the corner, is it? I was like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, honestly, off. man, it's You're still a bit of a walk. <laughs> He's just like, getting tired. <laughs> like, Anna's stronger than him. Um, but anyway. Uh, well, that's sweet. That's, that's, yeah. It is weird when you buy something off Facebook Marketplace or anywhere like Dundeal and you go to their house and like those are members of their family and they're just like looking at you. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like they're not like, you have one person being like, oh, hi, you know, do you want to come in? You go mm-hmm. to someone's house and everyone's like looking at you. Kids are there in their school uniform, you know, playing with stuff. And just like, it's quite rude. You know what I mean? It's kind of feels like. I, I, it's like that. Because like I, I sold stranger. it uh, yesterday. I sold it to a really nice guy. And I, I've become very like, this is my job. Like, I don't know, like Del Boy or something. Mm. I love the, I'm getting back to all these messages. I've put the, taking good photos, all this kind of stuff. Uh, this guy came around and I was, it's at lunchtime and I was like, I don't know if I can start making my lunch. Like imagine I was making a sandwich and he yeah. came in. It's that kind of thing. Like, I'm going to eat this sandwich. Like and do I have, do I, does he arrive and then I'm like slicing a gherkin? No, you want to like, be professional. You're a you professional, professional. I'm a professional. I'm very like that. Like, You're I'm a merchant. I'm, yeah, I'm a merchant. These are my wares. Do you ever do mm. that kind of like offered him a cup of tea? But you do it with a kind of tone that is like. I'm not really offering you a cup of tea. Yeah, it's kind of like, do you want a cup of tea? Do you want a cup of tea? Or you, know, yeah. you kind of say that so, mm-hmm. you know, like you're 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 ticking the little obligatory. You know, I'm a nice person box, but you're kind of like you, yeah. it's a trained tone. You know, I'm very. You know, he, listen, would you like a cup of tea? 
Yeah, it let's be very start. Inviting. Let's start this. Yeah, he came, didn't even sit on it, and was like, "I would love it, but I can't pick it up till next week." I'm like a my Dell boy thing, and I'm like, "Okay, you know, do I have your word?" And he's like, "I could give you a deposit of wow. fifty quid," and I was like, "I don't." I don't know what it was about him offering me a deposit, but I felt mm. like that was the most insulting thing to me as a businessman. Wow. As, as this kind of, as a merchant. I was like, that's not how I do business. <laughs> and uh, and he was like, I could give you, I could just send you a, de- a deposit on 50 euro on Revolut. Mm. He wants to secure this couch for himself. That's why he's offering the deposit. I was like, listen, listen, Daniel, that is not how I do business. <laughs> And I was like, uh, why don't you just take the deposit? I was like, could you excuse me while I provide for this house? Yeah. With my sales and my wares. Silence, woman. Like, so Silence. I'm trying to provide for this family. Yeah. I was like, Daniel, do I have your word? Oh, <laughs> wow. Like, he was like. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about my word. My word is everything to me. My father raised me. My father's German, right? He sticks by his word. My word is my bond. My word is my bond. Like that, I don't, I don't you need, asked me I don't to fit in money. literary reference today and I did now. <laughs> I did, but that's what everyone says. That's that's gone beyond actual Shakespeare. Well, that's just one. My word is my bond. Well, that's that... the power of Shakespeare. It feels a cliche, but he invented the Give cliches. Give us a Shakespeare that we don't know. You have 10 minutes. Go on. No, I don't know no Shakespeare. <laughs> he, it was like... <laughs> Yeah. He was like, uh, no, I would prefer to give you the money so that I secure the thing because you could just sell it to someone else. Whatever, that's kind of yeah. what he's doing. I'm like, no, 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 I won't take your thing. And he literally had to force, it's like, I'll send you the link. And I was like, just take the deposit. I was like, this is an mm. insult to me as a believer in people's word. Mm. I don't even want your money. This couch will be, you You will pay for this in your word. Like, I won't, no money shall cross each other's paths. Anyway, he did send me, that's I was finally nice. convinced to take the deposit. We were, so I sold that. That's good. Well, well your priority is getting rid of the fucking couch, though, to be fair. Sorry? Like, you just want the couch. Oot. Mm. You just want the fucking couch. Oot. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, well, I mean, I don't, I mean, when he once he picks it up, uh, I'm very bad. Like, he was like, I can't pick it up till next week. I was like, sure, I'll drop it off to your house. I'm mm. like, literally, like, the worst business man ever. Bad. <laughs> but what's, so. It only cost me 20 quid, <clears> natural. <throat> what's happening is, is uh, I'm getting, I'm sending this on Facebook Marketplace, and it is, just riddled with scammers. Yeah. I have had oh, yeah. so many scammers. The thing with, that scammers do is they say, hey, I'm interested in this couch. I can only pay through a TNT driver or a FedEx. The thing will pick it up for me because I'm like, who in God's name would get... No. It's so obvious when it's a scammer. And I at the start, I just started saying things like, fuck off, scam bot, or like, you know, go fuck yourself. But then I kind of started having a bit of fun because there were so many. Oh, nice. And there's, I don't know, I can't really share this with people, but... I don't know why I found a gif of um, a hippopotamus pooping. And uh, ah. I'm like, I don't know why hippopotamuses do this, but when they poop, they sort of swing their tail back and forth. And chop so it up. They, they sort of chop it up. Like, like a pasta like, machine. Like a pasta machine. Yeah. Like as a pa- the pasta comes out and they slice it. <laughs> hippopotamuses do that when they poop. And it's just a short <laughs> little gif like that. Oh, that's fun. So they... Uh, you, sent t- you sent it to them twice as well. I, I, I sent it to them a lot of times. Yeah. Um, so I, so I, I kind of had a bit of fun with them. So this was a note of Frank. You said, hi, is this couch available? I said, yes, it is. Hi, okay, but I would like to take come tomorrow, but I'm busy with work. I will send a DPD postman to your home to give Sounds you money good. and cash and collect. Then I sent the hippopotamus gif pooping twice. Yes, yes, yes. And then she said a lot of question marks. Yes. And then I said, oh, sorry, something wrong with my keyboard. I sent the hippopotamus pooping meme again. That's fun. And then I said, did you get that photo of the couch? <laughs> <laughs> and then I sent it again and then I said sorry my keyboard is weird it's clogged with hippopotamus shit <laughs> and then she left the group oh, um, but then I did I did a good few Donald, more the couch that we wanted that this reminds me said, of your mother's gone we uh, can't get it I'm interested uh, I will send a FedEx postman to your home Yaroslav. to give you your money this is from Yaroslav and then Great I sent name. the gif and I said please place the cash directly into the hippopotamus <laughs> anus <laughs> So are they not even bo- are they scam bots or are they are actually scam just bots. people doing it? <laughs> this is a good one. She said, uh, "I'm busy. I'll send a FedEx postman." And I sent the gif, and then I said, "I have a very sick hippo who needs help. Do you know anyone near the swamp?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I did this one. She said, "Let me explain." She just ignores that. Let me explain. And then I just sent a little. I said, "I need to make sure I align politically with people I do business with." Oh, and I, said, I thought I was going to have a bit more fun. Where's a good one? I do, I'm just having this guy. I got this guy to reply, and like, he said, "Okay, I will send a USPS postman to your home to give you money 
in cash and collect the item. I sent the gift twice and then I said, we'll trade for a large cork to stop the continuous flow of poop <laughs> that keeps coming out of my hippopotamus's bottom. Rubber cork only. I've been, I've had some time wasters in the past. And then he replied Thumbs and he laughed. Emoji. I got him to laugh. Oh, that's I fun. I got the scammer to laugh. He said, fuck you. With a few middle Yo, finger yeah, emojis. That's a bit scary. Anyway, I really last. recommend putting something up on Facebook Marketplace and just having a bit of fun with the people. That's a great idea. Uh, I, I will post these to the Instagram um, because they're hilarious, right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> they are funny. So I definitely post the GIF and and the guy. I don't know why that became the GIF that I was my Excalibur to battle them with. Isn't but, it wonderful being a freelance comedian? Just spending all day doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been sick. <laughs> You've been sick. I spent a really long few hours, a real, that's a good sentence, isn't it? Mm. I spent a long time the other day trying to reset my password for Instagram and Facebook. And I was like, I could only in my phone, I wouldn't let me reset it. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, I'm going to lose it all. And then I was like, that was my work today. <laughs> <laughs> I sat there at the end of the day going, that was today's work, trying to figure out how to save my Instagram. That was work. That's yeah. Great. Is, that, is it though? Yeah, it's great. What a stupid life. <laughs> but you what work a, at night. What an unserious you life. Yeah, no, I had to gig the same evening, but like, what an unserious life. Yeah. Did you leave mm, the house? Do you find yourself not mm, leaving the house other than gigs? Do you know, sometimes? I was just thinking the other day when I was walking to the gig, it was very mild to the night. It was very lovely mild. mild. It was, it was mild. actually unseasonable. It was very mild. And I said, hmm, this is pretty good. I was like, I need to make sure that Get you outside. don't. If you have a gig, because your gig could be, you could be on stage at 10 p.m. Mm. So you might leave till like quarter past nine. Mm. And you're like, I did not leave this house today, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have any kids to pick up or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, because I care about the environment. Mm. So <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> bike, actually, otherwise I would have them. Um, my bike, yeah, it just sits there. We actually we actually bought this electric bike off this family. Like it's a, like it has a seat on the front and a seat in the back. It's actually Japanese. It's called a Mamachari. And, and the family kept the sending you gifts, gifts of a hippopotamus. Of <laughs> no, we Terry found it on Done Deal, to be fair to her. And I saw and I looked it up and it was like, you know, it was a bit outside our budget. And I looked it up and to kind of buy brand new, it was kind of the same price. So I'm like, I'm gonna try and haggle. I'm not particularly mm -hmm. good at it, but I'm 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 good at I'm good, I'm comfortable in silences with you know, if I prepare myself for one, you know. Mm -hmm. So if I say anyway, went to this guy's house, he showed us his bike, and uh we took it for a spin, and then he and we were like, Look, we want to take it, but um I've noticed that this bike is the same price brand new. And I understand you brought it here from Japan and all that stuff, but I mean, for probably like a hundred euro more, I could probably get one imported for that. So, yeah. you know, could we knock a few hundred quid off it, right? And the guy was like, what? And he was really kind of, he was like, well, where, where did you see that? And I'm like, I can show you the website. Like I have the website here, you know, it's like, you won't find that anywhere else. And then Terry goes, right? This mm. is, Terry goes, while I'm in the middle of trying to make a deal, mm. she says, sorry, I think he's trying to haggle with you. And like, and then I just shot her like a fucking what? Yeah, and she was like, oh my. But it's this like, Irishness in you, isn't it? Do you have to kind of like relieve the tension or something like yeah. that? You have to kind of ease it up. Mm. But I was like, oh my God, you know? And eventually he was like, yeah, fine, whatever. And he was a bit thick with me or whatever, but it was kind of, it was kind of fine. Did you get a couple of hundred knocked off? Uh, I did, yeah. There but you go. Not, no thanks to my, my wife. I you usually... good cop, bad cop. I mean, good um, cop. And then his fucking... Well, it's a partner cop, do you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, so... Uh, I, I usually am Team Terry on on all your issues. I know. But I'm, she was very I'm apologetic after. She was like, I'm so, I don't know. I was saying, like, I was trying to make it seem like, oh, look, well, this is just, we're haggling. Maybe you didn't understand. But I'm like, no, you weren't. You were just trying, you know. It was very... It was, what you uh, want to do is you want to be haggling with me. Uh, if it was me as a salesman, sure. I'd be like, your money is no good here. Yes. Take, I've been found out. Take the, just take it. But yeah. then Anna will be next to me, so... She'll actually drive the hard bargain. That's fair. Yeah. I'm crap at it. I remember even even in Grand Canaria haggling, I was crap at it. Like the, you try How much on the, for this laser point? No, you try on the hat. <laughs> I only, whatever. my friend, I only have two How much euros. for this coral necklace? They have stuff outside <laughs> yeah. the shops and you try on like, I put on like a bum bag and um, she just appears and she's like, hi, ah, you want to buy that one? There's no price on anything. And she, I was like, I, was, I went, yes, I would like to buy it. And she went, it's 20 euro. And I was like, oh, and then I, I did it. I was like, oh, I thought this basket was all five euro. Oh, I'm sorry. And she went, I can take five euro. I was like, great. Nice. But it probably cost 10 cents for that piece of plastic bum bag. My dad said a great haggling tip is to have cash in your pocket and show the cash being like, I only have 20. And it's right there, you know? Yeah. What's the best you can do for me? What's the best you can do? I only have 20. And they're in Morocco being like, you know, I want to buy a poof. I want to buy a leather poof. <laughs> you know, how much is... And they're like, I only have, I only have 40 or whatever. And the guy was like, uh, 
okay, well, I have one for 40. I'm like, great. And it fucking stinks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have yeah. it at home. And I was all like, is this the same as the other one? And he's like, no, that's goat. It smells, but that's what it, you know. And I'm like, I'm sure it'll air out. Hasn't. Stinks. I like that your impression of your dad is just your voice, but a little bit more. Yeah, it's a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> because it sounds like... You gotta show, you gotta, well, he's more like, you got to show him the cash, Toe. <laughs> Toe, you got to show him the cash. But I... I Met your dad once, and I recognized him just through his voice. Yeah, he sounds the exact same as you. He does. He's got a very. And so does your brother. You all have. Where these... did you meet his dad? Uh, his offices when we were doing the green screen. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I went in kind of confused because it's this building, and then I walked in, and then the guys like must have recognized the person who was not a man of business. Yes, in the business in his building. Own You're now a businessman. And then, since since I'm obviously, since, of well, I'm more of like a, you know a, what fell off the back of the truck. I'm going to sell that at the market. Oh I bring that. Kind of a more unofficial, uh, but he. I just heard a voice that was Tony's voice going, "Ah, you're looking for upstairs or whatever." It was just yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. you know, beautiful golden Dublin voice, and uh, and I was like, "Oh, that's your dad." I recognized him from his voice. Yeah, no, he's very very strong. Killing, you also met my parents. What do you think there? Any, oh, any feedback? Great. Your mum, very good. She's also really coy about. Uh, she, your mum is. As I was, we were saying, on a, a did we do it already on this podcast? podcast? Well. We already no, no, no. <laughs> Your mum's gay is like you. Uh, <laughs> did you, did you, know, did you already stone. cover my parents in this podcast? Are you met them? No, God, uh, I'm maybe so met them once, but I, 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 the gig. I, your mum is coy, uh, like we were saying. Like she you did she, say that before. She was like, sorry, yeah, Tony. But sorry, she's sorry like to very, the listeners. Um, That's fine. Uh, what like, do my dad pretends that she doesn't? Uh, your dad's very nice, very friendly man. So you hate my mum? No, I'm. Wow, she's coy. She no, she's. A a, I think she, I'm just saying that because she pretends she doesn't listen to the podcast when we know she listens to we it. We know she listens to everything. We know you're listening right now. Right now. Um, which mm. uh, I am happy about, but Shane is like, don't listen in. No. She is listening and she's really, she's been sweating and palpitating about the mention of the pills earlier on. That's what she's, that's, what, uh, that's what's happening. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now. I don't do drugs anymore. It's just a joke. Mm. It's, um, I miss them though. Uh, <laughs> but I love both your parents and I think they're great. Thank you very All much. your parents is. Uh, well, I love your mom, obviously, because, you know, I've gotten pictures with her. We all got pictures with her mm. that time at the Bureau de Change. That's a, great a funny day. thing. I don't know if people know about that, but my mom, because she's a Dublin tour guide, she's walking around Dublin all the time and people see her a lot. And there's just this kind of like unofficial thing where comedians take a selfie with my mom. There's maybe yeah. like 15 photos now of just my mom with like random comedians taking selfies. <laughs> but it was the weirdest thing when we did that Bureau de Change and... I met your mom the day before and it was like, oh, this is funny. Yeah. I bumped into her buying costumes for the thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is funny. And then she proceeded to meet everyone else. Yeah. It was the weirdest. It was so weird. It was, crazy. It was, so weird. Yeah. It was like a joke when they were coming in at the end. Then it was like, one of them was like two people together. Was it her? Michael Fry and Peter McGann together with her? It was like so weird. It's just very, no comedian in Dublin is worth his two cents unless he's got his selfie with Fiona Sunderman. Yeah. There's no no comedian in this town is worth his two yeah, cents. That's true. Unless he's done he's done the seller and he's got his phone, seller, he's got a selfie. Got a selfie with Fiona. He's been that's sort of like the the sort of christening. Yeah, that's it is. the baptism. That's the oil on your forehead. Is the <laughs> is the selfie with Fiona? I hate I hate um, new emerging Irish pop stars. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hear me out. What? I'm anti cematic <laughs> Oh, that's oh, fun. Oh, that's huh? good. You don't actually hate cement. No, I like cement. Oh, okay. yeah. Cement's amazing. But you're anti cematic That's fun. Is there anything there? Yeah. I did, I did, uh, I don't know. One of my worst videos during COVID. Obviously, I had a very good COVID in terms of. That's how I became a comedian. Sure. And tell us, you were doing, you know, it was during the lockdown. <laughs> this man, our next guest, came from virtually nowhere and emerged as one of the big stars of the COVID-19 pandemic with his videos online, racking up millions of views on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Hi, uh, all Facebook. And he has... Please, please, just sorry, for the intro, please. Just for the intro. Oh. And Hi. he has brought a smile to our face during the darkened times. <laughs> Killian Sunderman, you had a great pandemic. Thanks so much, Claire, for having me on. Um, Where did you get your ideas? <laughs> well, you know, uh, sometimes I just would say hi to, hi to my mum and everyone who went to Dominican Convent. Could you please stay on topic? Uh, uh, and just, you're a comedian. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, the way you might be looking at things and then... You and think, you really, you know, you're so German, but you really get the Irish, don't you? Yeah. You really get us. You really get us. You really get, you really you know, get us. Cleared away sometimes. You're over there, but you, you might you're looking at us and you really get us, but you're over uh, there. 
you might be thinking stuff in your head like you might be for you it might be like you have like you're thinking about news or something like that like something happened and then you have to talk about that on the radio with me it's like there's something funny and I think about that and then I write that down and then I make that into that's a fascinating. sketch that's so, fascinating so, so you can make a, you can make a sketch about, oh, sorry Claire you can make a sketch about anything yeah so it's like that because when you think about something you can think like uh, anything that could come into your head. Well, I'm so really afraid like, to talk around. I'd be afraid I'd be the subject of using the material. Yeah. Using us as me, be really pilloried the now. The next oh thing, yeah. So speak. it could be like that because maybe later, uh, like I get on the bus because I get the 46A. Yeah, and yeah. And so I'll be sitting on the 46A. 46A. And so, detail, I, so I go upstairs because if I can't get a seat upstairs, because sometimes you know it might be full or whatever. Yeah. And so I'd be like looking at the window, and then I might think, oh, I was on that radio show or whatever, and then something might be like funny about that. So then I'd maybe go home later and make something about that about you guys I know I, I know. there's a big thing in comedy uh, roast battles where they'd be roast, yeah. roasting people yeah. would you would you roast us we yeah. were talking about this we were, this oh, morning yeah. weren't we we were talking about this Try, go, roast us roast there. us yeah. and, and go as hard as, as you'd like yeah well okay so I think okay so you're you're like uh, so Claire I think you're mm. paid way too much and it's you're a fucking you're also a bit shite like uh, <laughs> you're paid too much and you're a bit shite <laughs> Uh, and Got then, you there, Claire. And then you no, like dead right. you yeah. like no one even fucking knows no who one knows you are. Right, yeah, yeah. And you're you're also probably paid too much, and you're a bit shy. I don't even know his Christian name. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, who even fucking are you? By the way, I'm Ray Darcy. Uh, yeah, Ray. <laughs> I'm actually Ray Darcy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you might well. remember me from the den. <laughs> Now, Killian Sunderman's book will be out, released by Faber, uh, whatever it's Shut called. Up. And you can buy that there if you want. Now, coming up, a belly dancer who told us that she had made the bold step to get her belly removed. <laughs> and that's all coming up after the break. And of course, we'll be showing you how to roast a chicken using only your makeup. <laughs> wow. Watch the shit out of that. Mm. I don't know, what, what were you saying before that? I don't know. I was gone and uh, a bit dazed. But on you said book, you had a good COVID. Oh, I had a good COVID. No, that still hasn't brought it back. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I did a joke. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic. I said, uh, oh, I'm not worried about um, getting COVID because I love The Simpsons. What? Oh, I'm a Simpsons addict. They said you can't get coded if you're a Simpsons addict. A Simpsons what? addict. A Simpsons addict. A symptom. A symptomatic. A symptomatic. A, a Simpsons addict. addict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Mm. Anyway, that was my one. Well, that reminds me of that joke where it's like, um, uh, <laughs> where it's like, <laughs> you okay? You no, okay? You were, you, you did no. A, a this C-Mat is a good. This is addict. Well, what about um, C map was so good I could barely breathe. I was asymatic. <laughs> I, everything I'm googling at the moment, I, I spend if I, sp- I have a spare moment, I'm looking up how to deal jet lag, Australia, UK. Mm. Aus- I, I type in UK because that's a wider reach. Yes, I'm going to Australia very soon and to do shows in Melbourne and Sydney, and I'm so the first episode of way back we talked about jet lag on this podcast, and you said it's like you're sick, but nothing's wrong with you, mm. and I'm just terrified about it. I'm actually terrified. About have you found it. any top tips? Hydration seems to be the number one thing. Sure, okay. Because sure. I'm going on my own. I spent ages. You know, you can. This is how good real. Like, we're so used to Ryanair. I was trying to find out what seats that they booked me in on the plane because I was like, I'll seat or nothing. Um, or mm. I won't go. Like, wow. I'm not. I'm not going so if I have sorry, to Melbourne. like anything to stop them going. Like <laughs> no, the smallest <laughs> inconvenience. Mm. No, but I was like so convinced. I was like, I'm not going in an aisle seat. I was like, if I'm in, not in an aisle seat, I I will be woken up ten times. That's no problem. But I will be mm. too scared to wake anyone up to climb over them to go for a poop or a piss. Mm. Don't know why I said poop so quickly. I apologize. Oh. Oh. It's a hippopotamus oh. poop. Yeah, poop. Yeah, it was. Yeah. You <laughs> see, yeah, just poop in the brain. Yeah. <laughs> but hydration seems to be the number one, and then change your watch or whatever, and then try and stay away. Be, instantly jump to Melbourne time. Mm. So when you leave Dublin Airport but you can message oh yeah I wasn't sure what seat I was in the login wouldn't let me work and then I DM'd Etihad Airways and they just <laughs> wrote back like within minutes with your seat and they were like what's your booking number okay and your surname cool I was like yeah you're booked in an aisle seat I was like it took five minutes I was wow. like real companies obviously they're not, they're not it's not a person sitting there on her phone yeah yeah oh but shit but I was uh, like 
It's this getting is what, text off here. I have wow. said this before on the podcast. The companies that made not making profits, they're just they're cutting all things services. They're not actually a profit. If you if no one someone should answer your questions quickly like that. How are you going to entertain yourself on the flight? I'd be fucking. Oh, are you ready for I Australia? Would love a long Do you flight like, have like you that. ever been to? That's a big. That's Australia. The, oh, no, I've never been so far away in my life. One. Yeah. Will he come back? Will he come back? Van Niemann's land is a hell what's for that, a man. What's that? What do they call that? Country work? What do they call it? Regional Farming? work? When they go on, I'm going to just do that. Work on they the do, farm or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Um, My brother's over there. Is he? Which, come to which your show. Neil's is he's, he's working in Sydney as a carpenter. Oh, wow. yeah. I have two shows in yeah. Sydney. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Okay, okay. Mm. Free ticket? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll take all the seats. <laughs> Mums on seats. I don't mm. care. Oh he's a good. good laugher. He's a good laugher. Okay, great. And, bring he, and he'll bring a crowd. He'll bring okay, a crowd. yeah, great. He's a very popular man. And if you or anyone else you know is in Sydney or Melbourne, tell them to come my way. I was listed, did you see that on the website as a uh, UK? I saw they tried yeah. to co opt you. Well, it was just an accident. I think it's a clerical <gasps> error. And then I said I to them, I had a number of, number of other things in the email. And I said, oh, just to say I'm listed as UK. And actually, was, I was kind of like funny first. I was like, can you get that changed before I publicize it? Because I'll get a lot of messages. Mm. And then they didn't change it. And then I just emailed back and I was like, I had to explain. I was like, I know this is just a small error, but actually this is a cultural sensitivity issue. Yeah. And, it, and this happens to Irish comics, artists, athletes regularly. And I need to be changed. And they wrote back straight away and changed it. That's great. Okay. There you go. Because I think Australian issue. cultural institutions are kind of a bit more on mm. it about panicking, about doing the wrong thing yeah, in terms yeah, of yeah. nationhood and mm-hmm. identity and stuff. So sure. they were on it. But I was, it's very hard to write an email like that where you're like, I redo know it's just a mistake, but... Don't dare call me. That. <laughs> like, don't, don't fucking dare and change that. It's too to sweet, my friend, or you're going to have a problem down under. Right, let me tell you. Shane Amber's on its way to Melbourne kicks yeah. the fucking head. It wasn't Melbourne. It was I'm fucking Irish and if there's any confusion, listen to this. <laughs> what do you do in the plane? You're supposed to walk on the plane? Get Make up and fists walk. with your toes. Fists with your toes? Yeah. Should I get them socks? Buy anti-gravity socks. Or what they are they called? Anti-gravity socks. No. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> you're sitting on the plane, your legs just floating around. <laughs> Hey, I'm anybody's. I'm anybody's. <laughs> Come and get it. You don't fly. Just your feet. Just your legs are sticking up. Yeah. Like a baby. You, like your foot yeah, yeah. keeps. Yeah. Sorry. Could yeah. Sh- they're tapping you on sorry, the shoulder. The you go, yeah, yeah. Sir, sorry, sorry. Your, your, your foot, foot just, just my flows face. out into the aisle. Gets <laughs> smashed by the drinks cart. Person next, you try to read a book, and your foot just keeps yeah, floating. Yeah, yeah. In front but of they just like, gingerly just tap it away like a balloon. What would? How will you entertain yourself on the flight? I watch the films that are on the machine and great. in the seat. I think that's fine to do. That's all good. Mm. Um, you be, no, you should be working on your craft. No, <laughs> you not can we, we doing jokes on the plane. Mm. And actually, some people say, oh, it's so awkward when there might be a sexy bit in the film. I want there to be a sexy bit. Yeah. I want everyone to know I'm looking at sex. Can I just, P- sorry. I, per, I first I didn't, bang I didn't on jump in, but 50 Shades of Grey. I've had it with these motherfucking jokes on this motherfucking plane. That's Very great. Good. Okay, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm had it with these motherfucking jokes by this motherfucker Shane. <laughs> yeah. You had to one up me. No, well his is not had really plane related. It's not plane related. I'm at trying all. to No, I'm, yours wasn't. Mine wasn't. Yeah, I know. I'm being tense. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's um, a, it's culturally related to planes. Anyway, anyway I will take is. DMs on that about um how to do. I've got 2 days. I learned 2 days before Where you the first show. Doha. Doha. Where's that? that? I don't know. A Qatar. Oh. Homer, Homer Simpson. Actually, no, it might be moved to Abu Dhabi. They moved Doha Doha's Homer Simpson's favorite place to laugh. <laughs> no. Doha. <laughs> Doha. That was a real dad thing to do. Say Doe, a bad impression of Doe. If Simpsons was on, they'd come around the door and be like, you know, Doe. Like, Doe. But he wouldn't be able to, he wouldn't, he wouldn't really put his full weight yeah. behind the impression. Oh, look, there's Bart Simpson. There you are. Doe. Bart. What's Very the funny, Bart. I know we've said on the podcast before, but what's the funny story of the dad... Going with the Simpsons or something? No, uh, it was just my mate Joe was watching The Simpsons and Homer was like saying something on screen and he popped his head and like, ha, there's Bart. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. Some Anyone dad, getting Simpsons wrong is just always so funny. Some dad just trying to go, ha, yeah. what is, oh, look at Bart. <laughs> yeah. But look, as well as your tour, I'm also on tour. Mm. And not, you don't have to go as far away as Australia. You can actually come here to Ireland. I'm going to be in Vicar Street. I'm going to be in Greystones. I'm going to be in Limerick, in Blanche, in uh, in Dundalk. I'm going to be in Cork and Galway. Belfast. And Belfast and London. TBC. Can I'm staring at my agents right now. TBC. 
<laughs> with the London. <laughs> They're date. not watching this. Uh, no way. <laughs> They're not listening. It'd be interesting. But uh, so yeah, come go to my Instagram uh, at Tony Horror, and all the dates are in my little link there, and I'd love to see you there at my shows. But and then it falls Ban. to my feet uh, to plug my uh, Facebook Marketplace business, which is really <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically like we have got. We've got tires. We've got used shelves. Yeah. We've got socks that Killian Sunderman wore once, but is moving on. We've got a whole load of re-roll product that we are trying... No, um, yeah, yeah. you could sell the socks, I do think. You think I could sell the socks? I think if you put up socks and you were like, 100 quid for these socks, somebody would buy them. Yeah, I think so. Whew. Discreet shipping. Okay, go. well, let's just see. There might be a little bit. I won't take a deposit. I need your word. Maybe hold off until only. we do the OnlyFans and then we can add a marketplace. Give me your word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell you, you could sell socks, Garen. Garen mm. Noon? Garen Noon, he could sell, he could sell a whole truckload of socks. Why? People, people are in love with them. Oh, I think. Oh, yeah. I, I love them of, generally. I think I'd buy his socks. Yeah, but I think people want to smell yours. Like, oh, there you go. I think they want to smell it. Mm. Garen's. Um, uh, uh, but I do actually want to plug something. Uh, the Young Hawk guys uh, every week has a bonus podcast. Oh, and that's good. You guys should sign up to it because it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun on there. People enjoy it. We read out the interactions that we have. You guys send us really good mm-hmm. correspondence. It's a wonderful and community. Like that. We also give advice, um, solicited and unsolicited. We do kind of agony ant things. We do different tasks. We play different games. It's a lot of fun over there. Also, support the podcast. If you listen every week, give it a bit of support. Um, we would like that. Thank you. We would like that. And if then, you can. Um, also, if there's you can. a really fun show in May, which is called The Borough de Change. It's in Vicar Street. And it's a good way of, if you are someone who likes the Eurovision but feels like they can't watch the Eurovision this year because of... Yeah. Genocide. 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 Yeah. Uh, this is a fun way of having a sort of Eurovision-esque show without any, I guess, uh, Israel involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow, you're sugar-coated. <laughs> I was like... Hey, Palestinian my... flags are allowed, actually, at this, at this Eurovision, yeah, rather than so being on a list of uh, bad What's flags. important about the Bureau de Change is that none of the money goes to charity. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, actually. It's I don't want to just, position this as like a... <laughs> no, it's just a private a private business endeavor. Private and business. Killian is no, a there's always some man. element there where some money does go no, to a we'll, charity. We'll so. It's a guilt-free Eurovision. Yeah, it's guilt-free Eurovision. It's just um, fun. But anyway. Same Vicar Street, it's good. And it's funny as... Feck. That's feck. So check that out. Bureau de Change Song Contest in Vicar Street. And we love you so much. Cheers. There, the track. I am very tired. Fun, loud. And a little bit sad. He was the best guy around. Oh my, oh my. Is it hot in here or what? You're an attractive guy. It's the fabulous Tony Cantwell. I'm talking about Shane Daniel Burner.